Kathy brought up a very interesting point, very relevant, very current uh, from uh, the Today, Today Show, and I think uh, NBC might have had it last night, um, November 7th, but an apology issued by President Obama, and that, that was headline-making news, uh, an apology from the president about the uh, website that's being used for people to register for the insurance exchange under the Obamacare. And Kathy points out that uh, this relates quite well with the apologies section of the reading we have from Combs, the chapter one in Combs and Holiday, uh, specifically the image repair theory and how uh, it leads to uh, a process of apology up through mortification, which uh, Kathy points out that apparently President Obama has reached. I was interested enough in Kathy's post, I decided to go into the White House, uh, the whitehouse.gov website and click on the briefing room and just quickly scan several of the transcripts from recent press briefings just to see if I could detect some kind of uh, uh, system or, or theme or pattern of talking points or the White House narrative on this particular issue of the Obamacare and in particular the the way we register for health care insurance policies on the website. And like I've done, I encourage you to uh, do the same. Uh, look for transcripts of press briefings, uh, announcements, uh, news items that might provide some way of applying what we're reading about crisis communication to the real world, to real world cases, and not just uh, cases in the past, but cases that are ongoing. So in this case, uh, I'm looking at press briefings since October 31st, and I pointed out here with some footnotes how some of these statements relate to our readings about the image repair theory from Chapter 1 of Combs and Holiday. First, uh, Carney, the, the press spokesman, says, we didn't anticipate the scale of the problems that we've seen with the website. Well, in a crisis, you always confirm what's obvious. It's obvious they didn't anticipate it. So this is a way that uh, the White House might be acknowledging the obvious. And I give you a couple of uh, funny little anecdotes here. Uh, I was always taught as a young public affairs officer, you can't put lipstick on a pig. The metaphor is apt. Uh, this is a bad news story, and you can't, you can't uh, polish a bad news story. So basically, the website's a pig, and... and Carney has acknowledged that. However, getting back to the image repair theory, um, it might represent kind of a way of evading responsibility. You know, we didn't anticipate the scale of the problem, therefore it's not our fault, it's accidental. And also, Carney's explaining uh, the good intentions of the president and his office. That, yeah, we didn't anticipate it, but we meant well. So maybe a way of avoiding responsibility. Now, several passages here in the second paragraph. He talks about the president being very frustrated, teams working overtime to fix the problems. And then he kind of evades. He talks, but this isn't about the website. It's about, in the end, making sure Americans have uh, good health care. So my point number two here, in accordance with image repair theory, uh, calling on, uh, reading from Coombs's chapter, uh, the media have been attacking Carney and the administration over the last few days. So they're trying to minimize the problem, uh, reducing offensiveness by claiming little damage, and by reducing offensiveness, they're they're trying to get the discussion back on track, uh, and use their desired talking points about the, the benefits of the Health Care Act. So they need to get the media off the offensive and uh, follow along with the president's talking points. Now, also point number three, we could say Carney's engaging in transcendence. Uh, he wants to reframe the problem. He wants to shift the focus, shift the focus from the problem of the website to an opportunity and a solution uh, represented by the Health Care Act. Now, do you remember the agenda setting theory from your very first course in the program, COMG 500? Agenda setting theory. Obviously, the White House is trying to uh, adopt the media's agenda setting role. Uh, and in fact, the media, I think, are being more successful 
at keeping this uh, issue of the website on the front burner. Now, November 1st, in another White House press briefing, Carney says, we have to make sure that people are getting the information they need. There is a longer term benefit here than just focusing on the, uh, the website problem. So again, another example of, um, let's say, transcendence. Uh, he wants to switch the problem, uh, the discussion of the problem to a discussion of solutions and benefits. And then he acknowledges, okay, we knew it was going to be a slow build. And no question, it's a poorly functioning website. Quote, that's on us. So he's now moved into mortification, as Kathy pointed out. Carney's admitting responsibility for the website problem and expressing regret. Now, in the next sentence, he talks about dedicating resources and brain power to get it fixed. Well, that's the corrective action stage of your post-crisis response, promising to solve the problem. And then, with uh, footnote number seven, uh, he talks about the president being more frustrated than anybody by the website. It's an example of mortification, the president acknowledging regret bringing himself down to the level of people who are also frustrated. November 5th, you can see that the narrative is beginning to change. Now, obviously, they've been under fire. They, they can't get the media off the offensive. So they're going to change their, their communication strategy, their crisis communication strategy here. And Carney explains the president is focused on what we're all focused on, and that's getting it right. So getting it right for everybody. Uh, so they can access the benefits. So now, notice this distinct change. They're accepting responsibility and they're focusing on the corrective action stage or promising change. I think the White House has finally realized they can't uh, get the media off the offensive. They've got to solve the website problem before they can move on to a discussion of their preferred talking points. And then finally, this leads us up to uh, Kathy's point, President Obama's uh, nightly news, and I guess today's show interview, I'm sorry, Obama says, I'm sorry that they are finding themselves in this situation based on assurances they got from me. He's talking about uh, the sudden realization that a lot of people are, are falling through the net and not going to be able to get the benefits that they were promised. So Obama now has uh, taken responsibility and accepted uh, responsibility to find a solution. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to deal with these folks and we're going to do everything we can to get it fixed. We're looking at a range of options. Obviously not very specific, but I'm sure they're rapidly working on these options as we speak and it's very risky to get into hypotheticals or make statements that later prove to be false. So he's giving himself a little bit of room but promising unspecified actions. So clearly, as Kathy pointed out, the president has moved into the apologia stage. And his statement, that one, two, three paragraphs of uh, comments there, contain many of the essential elements of an ethical apology that are outlined in Chapter 4 of our Coombs and Holiday text. First, he's explicitly acknowledging the problem. He's accepting responsibility. He's expressing regret. You remember the president... Uh, is more frustrated and regrets this more than anybody. He's identifying with the stakeholders who are also frustrated. He's addressing the legitimate expectations, those expectations of people who were promised access to the website and health benefits. And he promises to solve the problem, quote, a, a wide range of options. Now, what's missing, and it would be interesting to track this and see how the White House narrative evolves. Uh, President Obama has yet to ask for forgiveness, reconciliation. Uh, he's yet to fully disclose the details of the problem or solutions. And he has definitely not offered compensation to those who have been wronged. I think he uh, may not ask for forgiveness, but he will seek reconciliation, I'm sure. He will fully disclose details of the problems and solutions in the next few days, I'm sure. But interesting point. I doubt very much. In fact, I, I would probably bet that no compensation will ever be offered to those people who might have been uh, denied access to benefits. 
Um, that's where the legal counsel and the public relations counsel often meet. I'm sure it would be nice for the public to hear that you know, we will compensate people for what's happened. However, the lawyers would explain that when you use the word apology, legally, in a court of law, an omission of an error in apologizing for that error is tantamount to an omission of guilt. And uh, many people could probably sue in that case for compensation. So I doubt very much that the president uh, or his legal counsel will ever get to the point of offering compensation. So I, I just wanted to offer this podcast as a additional resource to uh, continue our examination of crisis communication, uh, add a little bit of extra discussion to it, and hone in on some of the finer points of uh, the concepts of crisis communication that we can actually see occurring in the news every day.